Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. This is Lisa. Welcome to Real Talk with Lisa. <laughs> this is called Perfection. Right? Today is going to be absolutely amazing. Why? Why do I say amazing? Because we have brand new, new moon and uh, we have a guest today is not only heel talk but today is special because it's going to be real talk and for those of you who are here you just realize i did the whole thing brand new i decided to do this entire thing in a different way um, so this is called magic magic of reality <laughs> so reality tv in its at its best so welcome and um let's begin oh yes my guest is in here so i'll become more professional all right hi sega john how are you hello christiana all right i can't see my guest <laughs> Hello, Frederick. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so how do I see you together? <laughs> okay, this is the first time I'm doing it from Zoom. So I've never done it this way. It's usually StreamYard or something. So welcome, Frederick. I want to introduce you to all my guests. Frederick Busey is um, a serial entrepreneur and a creative more than 20 years experience in the music industry. Um, and I'm going to read this. He has worked as a songwriter, producer, publicist, marketing representative, creative director, and artist manager. Icon status, he is a marketing and branding consultancy and he founded that now through storytelling and the powerful ways he has initiated opportunities to bring transform transformative results for those who he works with. Frederick believes that his purpose in life is to use his talents, helping others to discover and exploit their gifts to impact the world for their greatest good. Actually, I know Frederick from a mutual place that I call Clubhouse. We have shared many rooms together. And I truly believe you are a rainmaker because you are now coach to coaches and an incredible interviewer. So hopefully I will do just by you. Welcome, Frederick. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I'm very, very glad to be here. I wanted to share this uh, through my own page, but... Uh, I'm just glad to be in this conversation as well with you. Apparently, you I have two rooms going. <laughs> You're very popular. You need, you need multiple rooms to, to contain <laughs> all of your personality. <laughs> this is amazing. It's amazing having <laughs> you. So, um, Frederick, mm. I have, first and foremost, um, thank you. Truly, I thank you for being here. I thank you for saying yes. And, uh, you know, we've talked many times in the room. We've talked together. And you are such a, not only humble, but a very calm. Your, your approach is so calm. It's like not much can rattle you. And even the day that when you and I were speaking and your beautiful daughter came in, you just brought her and included. So to me is like, who is Frederick? And when you mention uh, storytelling, would you share your story? Because you mentioned it in your book that it's the book Breaking Orbit. You say the book is a little bit about storytelling. Would you please share your story? in your own words. Well, thanks again, Lisa, for having me. I'm very glad to be here. Um, it's funny because, <clears throat> you 
you know, everybody believes that their story is so mundane. It's just regular, right? And uh, I'm one of those people. Uh, didn't feel like I had anything spectacular that happened to me, but the more I tell it, uh, the more I realize that everybody's unique story matters. And so when I talk about myself, I was, I am the oldest son of a preacher, grew up in the South, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, rural areas, small towns for the most part. Uh, my family's, both my parents are from Atlanta, Georgia, but they moved away um, when they went to school. And then after they got married, my father was pastoring in different small towns and things of that nature. And so I grew up with a very regular childhood, I would say, in every way, except that uh, we were homeschooled for all 12 years of our uh, primary wow. and secondary careers. Yeah, so so I did not go to a formal uh, um, traditional uh, elementary school or high school. I was homeschooled. And, and although I fought that tooth and nail for several years, especially as I became a teenager, I really wanted to go and get involved in all the normal things that uh, teenagers get involved in, in terms of sports and uh, so social uh, interactions and things of that nature. What it really, um, looking back, what it really did for me was allow me to explore uh, my creative side, to uh, learn how to exist without the boundaries that a normal thinking and normal traditional educational programming kind of does for you. And uh, even though I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't really aware of what it meant to be an entrepreneur, what I did find was that for me, um, I was thinking entrepreneurially, right? And so I was, I was at the point where my mindset was open to being able to create uh, new, new versions of a life for myself. Uh, so I, I went to, uh, I did go to college, even though my parents didn't really force me to go, but Along the way, I was a member of a group, a singing group. So I, I went At the to, time when boy bands were the, were the big deal, Boys to Men and uh, New Edition and, and uh, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, those, those were the rage at the time. And so we were seeking a, a record deal. And uh, I was one of the songwriters in the group, uh, which was my, my main claim to fame, I guess, if you will. And that <laughs> led to me pursuing a career in music as a songwriter and producer. Wow. I transitioned from being a songwriter to being an artist manager and working as a marketing director at a small record label for several years. Uh, then I transitioned from there to doing publicity PR. I was a partner in a PR firm for several years. Left there uh, to pursue my own uh, marketing agency to, uh, after we had some bumping of the heads with partners or whatever. And uh, as I was pursuing the marketing agency, I realized this is, this is not really something I really want to do. I'm not really passionate about all of the ins and outs, the nuts and bolts of marketing. I was much more interested in psychology of influence and how people think, what makes them tick. And through that process of trying to figure out what I was up to, I ended up uh, writing a book. And uh, this is after I really informally launched a coaching career, but once I mm -hmm. kind of what that meant then I began to dive into it and to marry my entrepreneurial experience with my love of helping people to get clear on what they want out of their lives uh, and to understand what's possible for them and uh, the book was really a catalyst for me uh, we could talk some more about that but in a nutshell that's kind of my story you know a uh, young kid from from rural Mississippi and Alabama who grew up to become a, a coach to entrepreneurs and leaders around the world. So in part, how did you break the orbit? Mm. So there's, there's a couple of things about that book, uh, about that title, you know, that I think uh, would apply to me directly, which is we all have ideas of what it means to be successful, right? And so we always think of success in terms of height, right? Uh, going up the ladder, going up in altitude. And the thing about, success at any level, no matter what level it is, is that when you do it in this world, it can become a, a rut, it can become a cycle, it can become an orbit where we kind of believe there's this finite thing, we reach our level and then we just keep going at that level, right? Or maybe we get a little higher, but it's always at a level, a circular pattern, uh, um, 
a routine, if you will. And for me, understanding that there was more that was possible, that I could break free of that, that we all can break free of that. And that not only can we, not only should we, but we, we're built to, we're supposed to, that's how mm. we're designed. And when we really understand that we are not planes, we're rockets, right? And there's a phrase in the book that I, I take, uh, that I, I coined, that says, rockets belong among stars. And so if you are not soaring amongst the stars, if you're not exploring the furthest reaches of your potential, then you are actually playing beneath your potential. You're playing beneath your ability. And that is why so many of us actually feel um, dissatisfied and fulfilled. And that was certainly me. Uh, for many years, I was banging around just trying to get clear on what it was that I was doing. You know, if you ever ask the question, I'm capable of so much more. Why am I not hitting that, right? And so we often chase shiny objects, courses, um, more knowledge, more books, et cetera. And we never really study the most important aspect of that, which is ourselves. Really understanding who we were created to be, how we were designed to be the most impactful in our lives. And so that's, uh, that's what Breaking Orbit means. That's what the book is all about. It's about discovering the most unique capacity, you know, right. singular capacity you, to impact the world. This is a great way because you are, you talk about every person is, a, is special in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, but not many are taught how to discover what it means. So right. when you talk about breaking orbit is like unmasking the mystery of our own personal power and how we come to show up who we really are mm -hmm. um how do we find out how do we know what is our personal power how do we know what is our zone of genius so that's a um interesting question in that it's not it's a simple thing but it's not simple it's simple because it's it's actually things that we overlook right the reason we overlook it is because it comes naturally to us it would be as if you asked a bird, how can you fly? I don't know, I can, I can fly, right? But if you asked a bird what was special about it and it was sitting amongst a bunch of birds, it probably wouldn't say that flight was the thing that made it spe you know, unique or spectacular. And because so, they do it all the time? Because they do it all the time. Um, I mean, that's, that's real, why exposure is so important as a child to, to possibilities and, and, and to different avenues of exploring themselves because as you raise that level of exposure you normalize greatness you normalize excellence right that's why it's so important but at the same time we while there are things that are normalized they're also we also diminish the things that are most powerful about us because it doesn't seem to be that big of a deal right I... if you're a great artist um oftentimes well i'll put it this way a lot of the things that we value are the things that it feels most rare, right? And there's certain things that we value more. So art or maybe music, um, things that it feels like other people can't do or can't do at a high level. We value people for that. The key is that understanding that everybody has that ability at some level, that we're all special or uniquely gifted in some way, but that shows up in different ways. Some are less obvious than others, and because of that, and because of the hierarchy that we rank um, these different abilities, talents, gifts, because of the, the way that we have that hierarchy, then we actually force people or, or, or we, we shovel dirt on those, those gifts that people have. And so we don't value that because it's not seen, it doesn't seem to be valuable to others in the world. So how did you figure out what is your zone of genius? Is it music? Is it creativity? Is it the language of speaking? Is it being a preacher's son, listening and learning how to be of service? So, all right. So first, what I need to do is define what a gift is, right? Mm. Um, because one of the challenges that we face and one of the reasons why, why it's difficult for people to discover what's uniquely powerful about them is because we, we identify it based on what we do, right? So we classify it as occupation or a task, right? And so, and, 
I define a gift as your unique capacity to create an impact in the world as only you can do it, right? It's a capacity. And what does capacity mean? It, what does capacity mean? It, it's, it's, um, it's as if you were to describe a battery, right? By, the, by um, its function instead of its, its purpose. Oh, so, so we say, so you say, well, what is a battery? Well, a battery is, you know, what is the, what is, what is the capacity of a battery? Well, the capacity can't be defined by the fact that you stick it into um, some device and it allows that charge to, to work, right? That's the function. The capacity is its ability to power um, a steam engine or a remote control or whatever. Like its capacity is the thing that defines it. So you have small batteries, you have big batteries. Um, and one of the challenges that, that engineers are trying to do is how do we pack more capacity into a smaller and smaller device? So if you have a microchip, the capacity of a microchip is not about the function, it's not even about the size. It's about the fact that this thing can compute and generate so much data information. And right. what is possible through that capacity, that's the impact that you have, right? So when human beings discover what their capacity is, versus their occupational function, right? Mm. Um, then it, tran it, it transfers uh, their lives uh, in terms of significance tremendously because now it's not just about the job that I have or how much money I'm getting paid. It's about the impact that I have and how I'm able to create that impact effortlessly, but also intentionally when I understand it and when I harness it and master that gift. So in a way, an orbit being this um, a, a, this regular repeating, um, how do I say it, path that, uh, that it's around an object in space and it takes, uh, it takes around another. Are mm -hmm. we as human beings, the capacity that you are talking about, the impact, the potency is the human, if we look at it, the satellite, which is our patterns and our experiences, our habits, who we are versus what we are. Very much about who we are, right? Mm. Um, but also it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of reframing our identity because much, again, much of our identity is, 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 is uh, embedded in the idea of what we do. Right. right. So we rank people hierarchically in the world according to occupation. Those occupations are ranked according to rarity or value that we deem that they have for society. Right. So a, a brain surgeon has a higher, uh, higher ranking than someone who works at McDonald's or a clerk in, in, in a, a retail store. And because of that, we start to see our innate value according to our societal value, right? Versus understanding that we all have a unique capacity and often we're just not playing to that strength. We're not, we're not playing according to our design, but our design is reflective of our identity. Our, our design is inherently uh, the part of us that, that encapsulates all the value that we have as an individual. Right. And so once we understand that, it allows us to be able to move at a different pace. It allows us to move with more confidence. It allows us to see, um, it allows us to raise the floor and raise the ceiling, blow the, blow the ceiling off of the possibilities. So no longer are we a satellite orbiting the, the earth or orbiting a planet because a satellite can only, it can only be driven to a certain place and then it's designed to orbit, right? It's designed to reflect information and data back. But a rocket, is different. A spaceship is different because it's meant to chart its own course, right? And it's also meant to discover. It's meant to pierce the universe and pierce the galaxies and be able to, to find all these other things, you know, uh, kind of like Star Trek, to boldly go where no one has gone before. And if you think about it, many of us are most afraid of going where we've never been or where we've never seen anyone else go. Well, the and unknown is, is scary. It is unscary. It is scary. But the reason why it's scary is because we don't 
trust our capacity to endure that or survive, right? So we are taught from a young age that everything that is, un, that is unknown to us, we should be fearful of. Right. So survival te tactic. Yeah, right? don't threat on, don't go there, don't go outside the box. Yeah, it's always be careful, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to have conversations with my wife about this because, you know, when we're telling our children all these things, like, don't do that. You know, you remember as a child, don't do that. Don't run with scissors. You're going to put your eye out. Don't run with a pencil. You know, don't don't jump off the bed. Don't do these things. Right. But as children, we're not born with fear. We, it has to be programmed into us. Right. So we, our parents tell us what to be afraid of until we have enough appropriate fear, I guess, to to navigate the world safely. And yet there are certain things that, that we have a unlimited capacity for that we never tap into because that fear doesn't just translate to the physical world. It translates into the social, the emotional, the mental, uh, the, even the spiritual world, right? And so we're existing instead of experiencing. We are, we are just living instead of discovering. And right. the, the true experience of life is, is discovery. I was talking about the same thing last night in my own room that how uh, we constantly say, I was brought up, I was brought up, I was brought mm -hmm. up. So being brought up means like I have been formed, I have been molded to versus I, I blossomed to where I am. I mm -hmm. discovered myself. So what are the three steps? You talk about three steps. What are the three steps to clarify us um, to be on, on, on our path to discover our purpose when we feel lost? Uh, I know you talk about, even this morning, you mentioned the three T's and it was so powerful. I was listening as I'm walking my dog and I'm going, I'm gonna remember the three T's. So would you like to share that with our audience? Yeah, well, I call them the three laws of giftedness. Okay. Um, and uh, the first law is the law that everyone is created with a special, unique, and powerful gift. Uh, that law is important because a lot of us are programmed to think that only certain people are special, right? So we look at um, a LeBron James, or we look at a, a Elton John, or we look at somebody like that, and we say, "Oh, this person is is special, and they're they're, you know, I can never be like them." And because we compare ourselves to other people, we don't recognize that there is that special gift in ourselves. Mm. And we just have to discover that capacity. When we think that, when we say that other people are special, what we're also saying in return is, I am not, right? There's nothing special about me, or I'm not special in that way, so I must not be as valuable or as, as powerful. Or not special enough. Not special enough, right? So, and, and again, that goes to, this ranking of, of capacity, this ranking of identity. And that's why I look, that, that, that first gift, is, I mean, that first law of giftedness is so important because you have to recognize each person has their own infinite capacity. So there are no limitations, right? And that's the first law of giftedness. The second law is that every gift is created with a special and unique purpose, right? So if you look around your room, I'm looking in, in behind you and I see a, a picture frame, a light switch, uh, a lamp, right? Um, you think about the microphone or, or your cell phone. Everything in our physical world was created with a purpose. Everything in nature has a purpose and a function in the ecosystem, right? So trees, f birds, flowers, um, animals in, in, in the ecosystem all have their own functions. Some are predators and some are prey, whatever the case may be. So we look at our, our entire physical world our, our entire metaphysical world, even with oxygen, everything has a purpose, why it exists. Yet human beings believe that we do not, that we have to generate or create our own purpose. Imagine if your, uh, your doorknob suddenly just popped off the door and said, I'm going to go find my purpose in life. And then it decided it was going to become a, a light switch or something like that, right? How effective would it be? I mean, so if, if you were to take that same analogy, why do human beings believe that we have to go off and find or create a purpose? Our purpose is tied to our gift and our, our, our identity is there, right? When we understand 
that our design, our gift is designed in a particular way to create a particular impact, then we understand that that impact has a purpose. And when we discover that gift, we discover our purpose. And now all of a sudden our lives have much more intentionality and we can live them more meaningfully and more significantly because they have the power inside of us that mm. we've been yearning, we've been chasing for. Cause that's really what we're doing. When people say I'm looking for purpose, they're saying I'm really looking for meaning. Like what does this all mean, right? And so when you discover you know, what your gift is you discover what that meaning really is. And so, and then the third law of giftedness, that one, this one is my favorite. It says that no gift can fail at the purpose for which it was created. And that's one of our biggest fears, right? So if you understand that everything was created with a purpose, what have you ever seen that fails at the purpose of which it was created, right? Your doorknobs work, right? Your light slips, light switch works. Most things in our physical world, we just expect to work. If not, they're broken, but we understand that they're not installed into the world until they actually work. And if you look at the universe, our, our natural universe, birds always fly, the sun always mm. rises, you know, water always flows, the wind always blows. Everything in nature always fulfills the purpose for which it was created. So if you have a fear of failure, if you have a fear of even success because you're afraid if you succeed too high, you're gonna fail at some point, understand that when you're walking in your gift, you cannot fail. You will not fail. Failure is not an option. It doesn't mean that as a human beings, we're not flawed, that we won't make mistakes, that we can't make uh, missteps. But when you're in your gift, the capacity that you have to create an impact absolutely will be successful because that's just how the world works. That's how God designed it. That's how the universe uh, functions. And so we have to learn to, to elevate our, our mindset to that universal field where we're now playing that bigger game and where we are playing our own role in that bigger game. That's beautiful. That's exactly one of the things that I share with my clients when they say, uh, do you think I can be hypnotized? And I say, there is no failure. Hypnosis is an internal process. How deep you go is a little bit my technique, but it's also you giving yourself permission. So there is no failure in life. Um, Love that. Uh, growing up, who was the greatest mentor and what has that given you? And uh, growing up, I would say that the biggest influence on me was probably my mother because mm. she, like I said, she homeschooled us. Um, my father definitely had an influence. I think his, his influence really came to bear a lot later for me in life, but Growing up, my mother was the one that kind of got me out of my shell um, when I was going through all those teenage hormones and things like that. And I decided I wanted to be a stoic, even though I didn't know what a stoic meant. I was determined to be unemotional and things of that nature. And my mom kind of brought me out of my shell, those conversations that we had, her encouragement and my creative gifts in terms of um, writing and, and speaking. Uh, it really, it allowed me to have that, that platform, that foundation to be able to look back on years later and say, oh, I was always uh, blessed with this talent in this way, right? This is how my gift shows up, but I wouldn't have had that foundation and I wouldn't have known that this is the place that I was supposed to start coming from if not for those early years with her, uh, just guiding and, and, and I guess in many ways mentoring me. That's beautiful. Uh, I, there is a saying, you know, I think this is what we're talking about, like sons and mothers and fathers and daughters and being a daddy's girl. So mm -hmm. it, when we've been told that there are no limits and potential, you just talked about that. And that's one of the reasons I ask because it's not so much our mentor, but what we receive from our mentor. Mm -hmm. And what is the biggest trait that being a successful entrepreneur in your life, in, in the music industry, in whatever that you set your path, uh, the journey that you have been, what is that biggest trait to be feeling successful? Hmm. I think it's not relying on feeling <laughs> successful. Um, I think it's about the definition. I know that for many years, 
Uh, the reason I became an entrepreneur is because I wanted to do music full time, right? And so I didn't, the nine to five, regular, like? well, the, the regular nine to five job uh, that, 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 that I had at the time as we were pursuing that, that career, it, it, it restricted my ability to be, you know, creative when I wanted to be, to be able to go off and do, uh, you know, shows and things of that nature on the weekends and stuff. So I became, I, I bought a, a commercial cleaning franchise and I literally started cleaning toilets in the middle of the night as a way to, you know, fund my dream. And so it, it taught me something about being relentless, that mm -hmm. it's not about what you're doing, it's about what you're focused on becoming. And so there was, there was a period of time, you know, a couple of years in when I, I would go to work and do those things. And I, I knew that I wanted to one day, you, you know, be, be on the stage and, and be on the red carpet and in the studio making all these most incredible music. But at the same time, I kind of was already living my dream. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had, I had a, a, a measure of freedom that I could make my own schedule and do things I wanted to do. And being able to, to find that pleasure, that joy in simply being able to create life on my own terms was something that I became, that became invaluable for me. And to this day, you know, when I hear entrepreneurs talk about, you know, I'm going to do this to build more freedom. And oftentimes what they do is they actually build their own prison. They, all, they build their own cage of their own making because they, they've built this box that they think is going to get them, make them free, but they've kind of locked themselves into it. And so helping people understand and expand uh, the, the realm of possibility for them is really about helping to understand you can be free now in your mind. You know, that, that the realm of possibility is always open for you. Once you realize that you can tap into it at any point and you can really become the thing that you, you most want to be. And so freedom is not some general vague idea that's out there. Freedom can be a, a finite thing that you have when you're walking in your gift, when you are living a life on your own terms, when you are free of the anxiety and fear of never becoming what mm -hmm. you're going to be, right? So what is the instrument of your choice? What, what, is, what do you play? Oh, it's musically. So <laughs> I, I play enough, I, I play enough piano to write and um, uh, I grew up singing. So that's my, probably my primary oh, instrument. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I'm not a great singer, but I, 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 um, that's my, that's my, uh, my instrument of choice. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So here's a, a question for you. It's sure. outside of the box, like, and you love being outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Other than your family, what is the most meaningful gift that you have received? Outside of my family. The gift of reading. I love books. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually write in my book, I, um, I gave my mother credit for teaching me to read at age three, right? And my mother said something to me, this is a couple of years ago. I was like, I just want to thank you again for teaching me to read. She said, I didn't teach you to read. <laughs> so I, I just looked up one day when you were three and you were reading. And oh. um, that, that gift of being able to put words and letters together. And I, it, she read to us when we were young. So I know that I assimilated that love of reading from her, but that you that read gift to your daughters. Mm -hmm. I read to them. I read to them every morning. Um, we have a prayer and devotion as a family, and I read read stories to them, and um, yeah. they have a they have a real good time. So now that's one of the things that my daughters love to do. My son he can read as well. Um, so they, they enjoy that experience. I, I love it because it opens up the world. Mm. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing that people can keep from you if it if the information is in a book or if it's written down somewhere, and then your ability to process it. Because when you read it, even though people are painting a picture, it's your mind that fills in the colors. And so, if you can do that, it it creates a, a muscle. It builds muscles in your brain for your imagination, and then when you learn to translate, go from reading to writing yourself, now you are the one that's in charge of the language. You're the one that's in charge of the paintbrush. And I, that's how you can paint your world. And so uh, for me, it's so valuable because a lot of times people are kind of locked into this idea that other people are given to them and being able to translate that 
from what somebody has written into a book into my own head to be able to take mm. it from my own head and to be able to to not just actually and not just create a life for myself but to be create be able to create this to, to give the paintbrush to other people so that they can start to paint their own lives as well to, to paint the canvas of their own experience i think that's a powerful a powerful way to manifest your gift a powerful way to be able to share your vision for the world that's beautiful you know in, in we've read we've uh, it, all entrepreneurs say the success to uh, a very successful entrepreneur or a business person is to have certain rituals that you do do you have morning rituals that you have before your work begins <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, there, there are some, uh, I, for me, it's, um, devotion. I'm a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a faith, uh, person of faith. And so right. uh, getting up in the morning and reading and, and, um, and kind of meditating and spending time, uh, just kind of talking to God. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I think prayer that, is a form of meditation. It is. Yeah, it is. And and, and, and even scripture is a form of meditation in that there, there, there are certain words and chants and melodies that are, that are embedded in scripture. Uh, taking those promises, those affirmations that we write, those affirmations that people are talking about, they're actually scriptures that you're writing to yourself as well. Yep. But, they're, but in, 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 in sacred text, there are things that those words say about you, right? And those words are important, I realize, because a lot of times people are writing affirmations because they don't believe there are certain negative or limiting beliefs they have about themselves because yeah. in some at some point they also believe that these these negative or limiting beliefs are things that they believe about god or about the universe or whatever and so when you have a a a form of reference a frame of reference that is higher than yourself that is telling you about the value of yourself and you can start to assimilate that those scriptures are affirmations as well now you have the ability to not just not just hear what God says about you, but also to take what you now believe about yourself, what you're discovering about yourself and to say, these are the things that I want. These are the things that I not just want to be true because I don't, I don't call them affirmations. I call them declarations. Because the difference between affirmation is something that you are affirming what someone else has said about you versus a declaration says not only that it is true, but I have the authority to say that it's true. To right? make, it, make it true. Right. I have the authority to make it so. <laughs> Again, another Star Trek reference, but... Um, make it so. I, I love that that frame because it just you're able to make that declaration and, and <clears throat> put that intent out there in the world, and you know full well that when we activate that power in our lives, we see those things come to fruition. We see them happen. So, before we come to a close. Um, we have a lot of messages. There's a lot of comments that, that I see uh, from uh, Christiana. It says, what a phenomenal conversation. Wow, chart your own course. So real, we move into uncharted territories of um, Beverly. Beverly's a very good friend of mine, Adrian saying, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Frederick. Yes. <laughs> I, I see you like a rainmaker and everything. Uh, my question to you is, if one of our um, audiences, I love to give gifts. I love to share things and I do it all the time. Would you be willing to share uh, something with our audience today? Would you like to give something? Absolutely. Awesome. Fact, what would you like to give? <clears throat> How about we give them not just one thing, but two things? Woo! <laughs> okay. So um, I am I am offering uh, a free coaching session to the first three people that will uh, text you, and you'll give them the information. Of course. But I'll I'll, Actually, I'll offer three. I'll give it to you. Right. I'll give okay. everyone text orbit. O R B I T to mm -hmm. 818 221 2797. And we'll also put it in here. Yeah. So when they when they send that text, when you text Orbit to that number, uh, the first three people will get a free coaching session from me and you will get a complimentary copy of my book, a signed copy of my book. 
amazing, amazing. So a part of not only this interview, but the gifts of you talking about the laws of our success, finding our gift, we get to have three people who text ORBIT to 818-221-2797 will get complimentary coaching session with you plus a book. Thank you so much, Frederick. Before oh, yeah, we course. close, I want to ask you my last mm -hmm. question. Would oh, you man. please complete this sentence? Yes. Frederick is? Frederick is a luminary. Um, the word luminary means one who brings light. Uh, and is my belief, a lot of times that word is used in connection with some of the greatest leaders and, and, and thinkers in the world. And I, I don't use that word because, uh, because I, I'm ranking myself as, as highly as them. Although I do believe that my gift in itself is, is singular, but I, I say that because everybody is a luminary. When you mm -hmm. use your gift, you are lighting up the world and we need every uh, as george bush once said we need these thousand points of light we need everyone to illuminate their place in the world by using their gift recognizing their own power recognizing their own divinity um so that's that's who i am i'm luminary yes you are and you have been so with so many and I am honored to have met you through the vessel of where we meet and through the beautiful room that has been created, that has brought us together and uh, what it takes to run a million dollar business by Kate and Daniel. And I wanna give credit to them as well, mm. because if it was not for them, we would not have met. And I thank you for this and wish you an incredible, incredible day. Thank you so much, Frederick. Lisa, the honor was mine. It's been a pleasure meeting you and sharing space with you. And I'm just glad to be here having this conversation with you. So thank you so much. Blessings to you, your family. You have a fantastic and a gorgeous family. So until we meet again, everyone, thank you for being a part of us. God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Goodbye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.